How to Simplify Radicals. This video tutorial can be found on our website, mathwarehouse.com slash simplify radicals, where you'll find several other goodies, including a free worksheet with an answer key and many other practice problems. So the goal of this tutorial is to be able to look at a radical such as a square root of 12 and write us in right and express it in simplest radical form. But before we do that, we need to review some prereqs that you're going to need to have under your belt before you tr before you attempt it. For instance, you need to know what the perfect squares are and what's important about them. You can get a list of perfect squares by just multiplying two numbers by itself. A number by itself, 2 times 2 is 4. The next perfect square we could get by multiplying 3 by 3 to get and so on and so forth. If we wanted the perfect square after 16, right, here's the perfect squares, we would just multiply 5 times 5 to get 25. So a perfect square is just a number that you get by multiplying two equal factors, 2 times 2, 3 times 3. And it's very easy to create them because you just start with 2, multiply by itself, go up to 3, multiply by itself, and so on and so forth. Now, what is special about perfect squares is if you have to take the square root of a perfect square, you get a nice integer. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Right? Square root of 16 will be 4. So this is an important fact about perfect squares that's going to help us out today. Another thing that you need to know involves how you, the square radicals, like the square root of 12. And the fact that you can rewrite the square root of 12 as the product of the square roots of its factors. <laughs> In other words, that's, a, that's an annoying phrase there. You can just rewrite the root 12 as the square root of 6 times the square root of 2, because 6 times 2 is 12. Or you could rewrite it as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, or any factors of 12. Now, let's look at, let's compare these two. Let's look at the square root of 6, square root of 2, versus the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Since this is a perfect square, we can rewrite the bottom one as 2 radical 3, since the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 6 and the square root of 2, they're irrational numbers, right? You can't take the square root of 6 and get a nice whole rational number. So, what we're looking for when we try to simplify a radical is we're looking for a factor like 4 in this case, of the original number that is a perfect square. This lets us... Okay, so now let's um, try to, to simplify the square root of 20. Remember, we're looking for a factor of 20 that is a perfect square. So keep that list of perfect squares handy. If you forget how to do it, forget the perfect squares, let's just just generate them by multiplying a number by itself. 2 times 2, 4. 3 times 3, 9. 4 times 4, 16. 5 times 5, 25. Now, we could actually stop at 16 because 25 is bigger than 20. It can't be a factor. So when you're trying to figure out what is that factor, of the radicand or 20, what is that perfect square factor? You want to start with the first number that is less than the radicand. 16 is the largest number on this list that is less than 20. So we ask ourselves, is 16 a factor of 20? Nope, you can't say 16 times, blah, blah, times some integer equals 20. Is 9 going to work? Can we say square root of 9? No. Square root of 4, though, does nicely work. Square root of 4 times square root of 5 is 20. So we can rewrite this as 2 radical 5. All right, so the only thing that we're, I wanted to clarify with this problem is, step 1, you have to have the uh, list of perfect squares ready. Step 2 is, you don't want to find just any perfect square. You want to start with the largest number on this list that is less than the radicand. 
and then work your way this way. And let me show you why you want to do it this way. Let's try this problem. Let's work on the square root of 72. Now we're going to have to extend our, our perfect squares list, right? 6 times 6 is 36. 7 times 7 is 49. 8 times 8 is 64. 9 times 9 is 81. And we're definitely done now, right? I mean, 81 is too big. It's bigger than 72. 64 is the first number. Well, that is less than 72. So we ask ourselves, is can we multiply 64 by an integer to get 72? No. How about 49? Is 49 times a whole number equal to 72? No, nope, but 36 works. You can rewrite the square root of 72 as the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 36 is 6. Now, let's say you didn't listen to me and you wanted to start your list with 4. And remember, I'm telling you to start at the largest number less than 72. That would be 64, and then work your way this way. We tried 64, we tried 49, 36, 25. I mean, sorry, at 36 it worked. Let's say you started at 4 and wanted to work your way this way. Let's see what will happen. It'll work, it's just not as... it just involves extra steps. You realize that the square root of 72 equals the square root of 4 times the square root of 18. And you've got 2 radical 18, right? Because the square root of 4 is 2. But you're not done. Because the square root of 18 also is can be simplified. Because 9 is the largest perfect square that goes into 18 evenly. And you end up with 2 times 3 times root 2 or 6 radical 2. My point in showing you this is you really do want to start looking at the first factor that is less than your radicand. If you go in the other direction, like if you start at the beginning of the list and work your way larger, you run into this problem where you have to keep on simplifying it. If you start large and go small, start from 64 and go to 4, the first perfect square that's a factor that you find will be the only one you need, because square root of 36 will simplify directly to 6. Let's simplify the square root of 45. Okay, Generate your list if you don't know it, right? 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. Again, you just multiply 2 times 2 to get 4, 3 by 3, 9, etc. until we get 7 times 7 equals 49. That's too big. 49 is larger than 45. 36 is the first number that we really want to look at. Can you, can you use it? Nope. 25, no. 16, no. Um, 9, yes. That was the first one we found. Root 9 times root 5 is root 45. And the square root of 9 is 3, radical 5. So, now let's look at something like, what if you had a coefficient other than 1 in front of your radical? What if you had to do like 4 radical 45? Just remember that right here is multiplication. So it's really 4 times the square root of 45. So we can simplify this first. You can just deal with the square root of 45, which we just did up here. to be We simplified to be 3 radical 5. And then it's just multiplication. You've got 4 times 3 radical 5, which equals 12 radical 5. So if you have a coefficient out in front, you start off the problem the same way. You, you kind of ignore the coefficient. You simplify the radical. And at the end, you multiply 4 by, in this case, 3, the number that you were able to get out of the square root. Let's try another one like that. <coughs> Let's simplify the square root of 108. Generate your list, right? 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 8 times 8 is 64, 9 times 9 is 81, 10 times 10 is 100, and 11 times 11 is 121. First number that is less than 100, less than 108, sorry, is 100. Doesn't work. 81, no. 64, no. You just try these one by one. 49. 36 does work. It's the first number that works. You can say 108 
the square root of 108 is equal to the square root of 36 times the square root of 3. And you get 6 radical 3. Now, let's pretend there, let's, let's do it with our um, coefficient out front. If it was 7 times root 108, you would do that whole, you, you would start the problem the same way. You would simplify this to be 6 radical 3. And you would just remember that there's really a multiplication sign here. And you would get 42 radical 3. Okay, that's it for how to simplify radicals. Remember, you can find um, more practice problems worked out step by step, as well as an answer key at mathwarehouse.com. Simplify radicals. Thank you.